Hello everyone, it's Deltlead, and today on Rocket Aesthetics, we're going to be covering how to use different textures to make your rocket as good as it performs. Now, it's come to my attention that there are people who are alive right now in this very second who are not subscribed to the Integrated Space Systems channel. Now, if this happens to be you, then what the heck are you doing? Subscribe already. Alright, now, shameless plug out of the way. Textures. Textures are one of the easiest ways to put makeup on your rocket. Now, in this video, I'm going to be breaking down how to use textures in a few general guidelines, and then we'll take a look at the specific textures and examples of things you can do with them to make your rocket look nicer. Now, rule number one, don't use the same texture and color for your entire rocket. There are a lot of people in the SR2 community who will tell you that the simple texture is the worst, and they're half right. But simple texture is actually a pretty neat pattern that can be used for a lot of different things. It gets a bad rep though because it's the default texture in the game and a lot of non-aesthetically minded players will leave it on their fuel tanks and it looks bad. Not because the texture itself is bad, but because every fuel tank on the rocket is the same texture and color. So rule number one is don't use the same texture for everything. The human eye likes to see variety and breakups in the pattern. Rule number two, don't use the same color for every part of your rocket either, and don't keep the light blue color that a lot of parts have as their default trim color. Spice it up. Lots of rockets have used lots of different colors for lots of different reasons. You could go with black and white color schemes of many of the 20th century NASA rockets, or the gray color scheme that most of the Soviet and Russian rockets have used, or use the orange color of the fuel tank installation that the Space Shuttle External Fuel Tank or the Space Launch System use. Do something, don't just leave your rocket with that grayish white that the game defaults to. Now rule number three, break up large flat surfaces with detail. If you look close at a rocket, you'll notice right away that there's almost never a section larger than a meter or so that's completely flat or smooth. There are all sorts of different bulges, divots, seams, flight abort systems, cameras, sensors, you name it. There are all sorts of things that rockets need beside fuel and oxidizer, and their designs reflect it. Why not use your batteries or modern propellant tanks to add some texture to your main fuel tank? Or you could use the strut part to make a runway that rockets would use to protect electrical connections and fuel pipes running down the side of a tank. Whatever you think of, try it out and see if it looks good on your rocket, but use it as an opportunity to introduce different textures, colors, and details to your rocket that would otherwise be a flat cylinder. Now that we've looked at some of the general rules, let's talk about textures in the game and what they're good for specifically. And we'll start with simple texture. Now, simple texture is simply a number of vertical lines with three horizontal lines spaced out much further apart. The simple texture is best on large fuel tanks with a lot of tiling. So scroll down to the bottom of your property parts tab and set the tiling to at least the double digits. I usually settle for 12 in both the X and Y scaling direction. The hexagonal pattern has literally nothing to do with hexagons, so its name is a misnomer. It's actually a bunch of rectangles with circles that are meant to look like bolts. Now it's also good for large fuel tanks, but personally I use it more for the bodies of satellites and space stations. Like the simple texture, be sure to crank up the tiling on this one for maximum visual effect, because at 1 to 1 it looks a bit cheesy and the bolt holes look a little low resolution. Now the panels texture. The panels texture is made to look somewhat like the aluminum skin of an old airplane with weld lines and rivets. Now, the panel texture is very popular and it can be used for a lot of things, but personally, I like using it with a highly reflective silver color, and this texture makes it look like exposed metal on a spacecraft. The channel's texture looks a lot like the texture of the Space Shuttle external fuel tank. It looks like, you've guessed it, channels or grooves in the side of a fuel tank. Now, it has this corrugated appearance, which is often used by fuel tanks to add structural support without adding a ton of weight. It's the perfect texture for your main stage fuel tanks, and it pairs well with a flat, orange color to look like insulation foam sprayed on the shuttle of an external fuel tank, or you could just leave it with the white color. Now, I'll be honest, I don't really know what they were trying to go for with the vent's texture. The vent texture looks very similar to the channel texture, except that there are periodic flat spaces in both directions. It works well, I think, for small fuel tanks and probe bodies or satellite bodies. Now the camouflage texture is actually hexagons, unlike the hexagonal texture. 
It's meant to resemble advanced radar deflecting materials that you would see on futuristic planes. It can be very useful for creating futuristic satellites or planes with very sleek, smooth surfaces. But I would recommend turning the detail slider down with whatever color you're going to use with the camouflage texture as it looks a little weird with dark colors and high levels of detail. Now the tiles texture is literally just that, tiles. And I personally love it for my space station synth satellites or to use it as a heat shield texture. And a 6x6 or an 8x scaling works very well with this. The rivets texture is, again, just that, rivets. They are a series of circles that are evenly spaced to look like structural bolts or rivets holding the, together the skin of your fuselage to the frame. Now be sure to scale it up a lot if you want to use it for an aircraft fuselage as the rivets are a little too big to make sense and spaced out a little too much. The cross beams texture is meant to resemble structural steel beams with vertical and diagonal crosses. I think it's best for small cosmetic tanks or shrouds or structural components around your rocket. And you definitely want to scale this up at least to something like 16 by 16 in both your X and Y directions. Otherwise the cross beams look maybe a little too big and you don't really get to appreciate the finer detail of it. The grooves texture looks a lot like the pattern used by ships when welding hull plates together. They're good for large fuel tanks or other smaller structural components, and as such, you should scale the grooves texture depending on the size of the tank that you're working with, but they look good in a lot of different sizes. The insulation texture, which is meant to resemble foil that is often used on satellites and probes, is the last texture in the game we'll talk about. Now in space, the best way to keep cool is to reflect the cosmic rays that are hitting your craft with a highly reflected material. Reflective surfaces are as good at reflecting heat as they are light, and in space, where there is no air to physically transfer heat, cosmic rays are the biggest concern. Insulation texture is best used with a shiny gold or a silver texture meant to resemble that smooth, metallic foil, and it's great for probes, satellite bodies, engine shrouds, or even small external fuel tanks, anything that you would want to keep cool in the intense light of the sun. Now, the reality is with all that said, there is a lot you can do to mix and match different textures. You can change how they look with scaling and color, and don't let my advice be a hard rule you have to follow. Experiment with different textures on your crafts to see what interesting combinations of color and texture you can create. In the end, what you think looks good is what you should do. It's all in the eye of the beholder. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and click that notification icon. And if you're already a fan of the channel, then consider joining the channel as a full-blown member for exclusive perks. Until next time, keep on building.